beautiful car. Oh, wow. And off it goes to get an award. Maybe it's best in show. Who knows? Here's a survivor of some sort. Hi, I'm Christine Reed, and I'm here with Leslie Kendall, the famous curator from the Peterson Museum. And you're also a judge here today at Amelia? I'm a judge at Amelia Island. I'm very lucky because I get to judge the Mercedes-Benz 540K and 500K class, a wonderful class. Very nice. And so that's not quite post-war? Uh, not quite post-war. It's uh, late pre-war. Lots of very famous people, a countess, uh, baronesses, uh, you name it. Those are the kinds of people that had, that had these cars. Mm -hmm. uh, very expensive when new and fairly very coveted today. Yes. They do have a little bit of Nazi history. Well, some of them do. Actually, one of them down there indeed does. It was belong to Rudolf Hess. It's a, a touring car, a 500K touring car, uh, entirely original condition. Um, but, you know, a car can't help its history. That's true. It's, <laughs> it didn't have any choice. So, yeah. But we're, so we're here to celebrate the car and, and uh, not necessarily the first owner. Yeah. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, most of the bodies that Mercedes-Benz did were Zindelfingen? Zindelfingen. Yes, exactly. Um, designed by a, a fellow named Ahrens. Okay. And uh, who's, who's... Yes. Leslie Kendall is the famous curator from the, the wonderful Peterson Museum and just an absolute expert in virtually all cars, but you get to judge the 540K class. First of all, you're very kind, and yes, I get to, I feel very privileged. To, to judge that class. They're some of the most beautiful cars ever built. Yeah, very, very significant. Very historically significant. Historically significant uh, from a technical and um, aesthetic viewpoint. Yeah, and as I recall, the Zindelfingen bodies were what, what Mercedes-Benz was generally using? Yes, Zindelfingen was Mercedes-Benz kind of in-house coach builder. They were designed by uh, von Ahrens. Uh, and those are the kinds of bodies that, um, uh, it's one of those rare cases when a factory body is usually worth more than a custom body because they're so pretty to begin with, it's really hard to improve on them. Wow. What were some of the other body designers? Um, I think th th there were quite a few there were some French coach builders or some British. A lot of, I mean, because because Mercedes Benz was in Germany, they sold all over all over Europe. Uh, they were they were bought by the um, by Mayfair, for example. <laughs> As a judge here, when uh, a car has had different, <laughs> somebody's happy. <laughs> When a, when a car has had different bodies throughout its life, which is there a certain body that would get favor? When a car has had multiple bodies, and in the classic era that was frequent because a lot of times the body would wear out far sooner than the car would. The chassis would be perfectly fine, the engine and the running gear, the body would just rattle itself to death and you had to put a new one on. Um, that's allowed, that's permissible, that's acceptable according to Concord rules. And when you're judging and you look at a, at a vehicle that's been rebodied or the body has been modified in some way, you have to look at it in terms of what is important about it. Was it most important in its first iteration or was it most important in its second iteration? When was it um, m most uh, historically significant? When, when was that period in its life? And that's very much like architecture when you're looking at architectural historic significance. Well, it's, it's an interesting comparison because yes, it's a, uh, almost exactly like architecture in fact, designing a uh, coach built car was like sitting down with your coach builder. It was like a little like sitting down with your architect. You can design the sweep of a fender, the the uh, finishings on the interior, the the uh, the hides on the upholstery. You name it. So sometimes one body is more attractive, more graceful or harmonious with its lines, but it might not be the most historically significant. Then where would you? Well, it's sometimes it depends on the on the type of judging. So f uh, here, for example, uh, we judge the cars according to their beauty and according to their correctness, because we really are, we, we do want to get to the spirit of the proceedings. And, and we want to get to the spirit of the Concord Elegance, which is when the lovely ladies <laughs> would dress up to match the cars and present them in in, in front of judges, that long tables full of judges, yeah. and and uh, beauty was everything, and mm -hmm. it, it, it's like um, it's like fireworks. Just for that one fleeting moment, it left the viewers with a spellbinding impression of just how beautiful an ensemble could be. Yeah, nice. Do you think we'll have a Goodwood here in America? Something with the the period costume wardrobe? You know, I hope. 
I really hope there can be a good wood. It, it, it doesn't even need to be good wood. It can be something American because America embraced Concords. It took us a little bit longer. We weren't exactly uh, in the European mode when we were building our cars, but um, but I would like to think so. I would like to think that eventually we would we would um, acquire the same kind of enthusiasm that they have in Europe, and and that would lead to a show like that here. So what is the next big thing at the Peterson? The next big thing at the Peterson is an exhibition in our Peter Mullen uh, Grand Salon, Peter Merle Mullen Salon, of Hollywood cars, not just any Hollywood cars. It, it's cars of Hollywood fantasy films ah. uh, and films set into the distant future. Oh. Uh, um, you know, like Mad Max, for example, and uh, Death Race 2000, and uh, sometimes the future was dystopian, and usually, you know, it's it's Hollywood predicts that it would be dystopian, so um, those are the kind of cars they make for those movies, and those are the kind of cars we have in this exhibit, but we're going to have over 30, and we're going to touch on all different genres uh, within, that, uh, within that scope. Metropolis comes to mind. Would that be? We tried to, f we actually found two Rumplers. Oh. They're both in Germany. They're both in German museums and neither museum would loan one to us, which we totally understand. <laughs> uh, but, you, but you know what, that's so, that's wonderful that you asked. That's a very enlightened question because the Rumpler um, was uh, featured in Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Mm -hmm. and, and you saw like, dozens of them going by on these modern, <laughs> on these right. modern highways. And it was kind of cool the first time I saw it, I'm like, oh my heavens, that's a rumpler. It's incredible. Wow. So two survived, we tried, but wow. there'll be pictures. Good. <laughs> it won't be the same, but. Good. Very cool. Well, thank you very much, Leslie. Great to see you. You're very welcome. It's so nice to see you. Likewise. This is a 540K. It's actually a transition car. When we were talking to Leslie Kendall back there earlier, this is the class that he judged. And this is basically it. <laughs> it's probably too loud. As a transition car, it actually came out with a 500 chassis, and then they gave it the 540K power plant. The body, they're calling it a Spezial. And uh, so the Special body is uh, <laughs> a busy day here at Amelia Concor. This, what's really interesting to me is that this car stayed in the same family for 53 years, and it was originally a graduation gift to one Hanning von Krieger, and they just kept it in the family from from that time forward. It's just an absolutely beautiful body. This sweeping, almost fabric-like uh, coachwork is just beautiful. It's very, very dramatic, expressive, sculptural, and it, it certainly evokes uh, the shape of a wave to me. Um, I'm not sure if it's Sindelfingen. It's, they just call it a Spezial. I was hoping to find the owner and ask about the coachworks because they are so stunning. Maybe it is Sindelfingen. Uh, but this is one of the famous 540Ks and was originally uh, a 500 chassis, so therefore a transition car. Okay. Uh, it was an honor and a privilege to be able to what, Oh, what else? Oh, I didn't, you know what I didn't do? So, so this graduation gift, basically, this was a 1936, a 1936 540K Spezial Roadster. It's in the Rare Wheels collection in Windermere, Florida. And this Mercedes was, as a graduation gift, it was basically given to a 19-year-old. So I don't know if they had the 16-year age limit at that point, but he was 19 when he began driving this car. It had, uh, had 180 horsepower. And that's, you know, I mean, uh, 1936. So a lot of these did not survive World War II. We got the I'm idea. I'm Christine Reed. I'm Tom Hill. It's Tom, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. Good. Oh. Okay. I'm standing here with. I'm standing here with Tom Hill. He 
brought this beautiful transition 540k to 500k chassis with a 540k power plant. There was Leslie. We just talked to him about the 540k class that he uh, judged in. So, so Tom, you were just explaining an amazing story that goes with this car. I was impressed to see that it was originally a gift to a 19-year-old Henning or Hunting Factory. Henning. Okay. But you say he didn't actually, it stayed in the family, but it was someone else. The, the mother bought the car for the 19-year-old son as a graduation gift when he graduated from, from high school. And uh, Henning was a free spirit, and he was a socialite, and he was a, a fun guy. Uh, so he enjoyed the car for a short period of time, but then the car got handed over to his younger sister, uh, Gisela. Uh, she was the Baroness, and she was beautiful, wealthy, and she had this car to drive around in. Wow. Very befitting. <laughs> yes. We'll show you pictures of that later. And so, you know, she kept this car throughout, and this is 1936, so everything was changing in England. And they realized that they were not Nazi sympathizers, so they needed to move. So her brother actually had to go to war. She moved to Switzerland to basically find a, a safe place to be, and she took the car with her. So the car went to Switzerland. Uh, a little bit later on in the life of the car and the Baroness, she moved to the United States. Okay. And she brought the car with her, where she drove the car in New York City and in Connecticut. Uh -huh. And um, as the restorer said, I think she used the fenders as curb feelers because the fenders didn't have a straight line on them because they'd hit all the telephone poles along the road. Wow. <laughs> so you really had to go back to the early black and white photos, the very earliest photos you had? We did a lot of research to make sure that we really had the car correct. Um, we purchased the car after it had been restored, and then we just did more research to make sure that everything that was done was correct, and we're still finding some things that we want to correct to make the story true with the car. I see. And so it is a single-fingered body. It is, yes. Okay. Yes. And when when it says special, what does that designate? The special was, these were, these were a very limited production car. They were 25, 26, depending upon who you talk to of the 540k special roadsters and the okay. special roadsters the special meant that the convertible top went down into the boot under the car uh -huh. so that it was hidden so there was a much more clean, uh, clean look right nice. the other thing that was interesting in these cars there's no trunk uh -huh. so the car weighs 5800 pounds has two seats and there's no trunk there is a rumble seat in case you have some friends that want to come along but there's no place for luggage uh -huh. So these cars were more about being seen mm -hmm. than they were utilitarian. More of a frame and a convey convey you through the public spaces. Correct, correct, <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> nice. Um, what else? Let's see. So the single finger body, there was nothing, I mean, it looks like there was something special about this body. I mean, it just is so expressive. We, we, we look at these, these, these 540K special roadsters, and they look like a Frenchman designed them, not a German. Yeah. Because the German yeah. cars typically are more utilitarian and just blockish. This car flows. Mm -hmm. And that's really, it's been, it's, it's a classic, timeless look. Yeah. that you get only in one of these 540k special roadsters. Indeed. The Cruella de Vil car. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find it? How did you come about the uh, acquisition? We actually knew about this car. We we kind of uh, tr traced it and we, we bought the car a couple years ago. Okay. So so. so how long have you, a couple years? A couple years, about okay. two years, yeah. Gotcha. So I, I actually am not the owner. I manage the collection and take okay. care of everything, and and I find that I spend as much time researching cars as I do cleaning them. Yes, <laughs> yeah, a lot of due diligence, you a bet. lot of you research, bet. yeah, before you make a video. Yeah. Great. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Thank Tom you very Lynn. much. Did you get it? Did the people walking in front? <laughs> you can edit that. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll
um, paying for the storage of this beloved car back in Connecticut. She was living in Switzerland. So Amelia Island tends to have a lot of manufacturers that like to have a presence here. Any manufacturer that uh, has a heritage brand wants to be here. Amelia is all about the heritage of different automakers. So Mercedes-Benz has a long history with AMG and here they are showing a variety of their latest AMG offerings. This uh, GT63S definitely caught my eye. It has a carbon fiber spoiler and a matte finish. I'm not sure if it's a wrap or a paint, but I love the color. So had to uh, do a little walk around with this one. There's all kinds of little DTM, you know, of course DTM or Deutsche, Deutsche Telemark, no, it's racing in Germany that ended up doing all sorts of little body mods that would uh, affect the aerodynamics of the cars and help them to have more downforce and be more slippery and quiet in the wind. And so that is a lot of what AMG was informed by when they do their little changes to the, the standard Mercedes-Benz models. So this has uh, an enormous wheel, as it should. It's a four-door, and I'll bet it moves like, you know, a much smaller car, but it's a, it's a large car, as you can see. Little AMG details here and in the tailpipes in a lot of different places. So those who may want to try and bake the look of an AMG with a kit will be hard pressed. Um, that, you know, that tends to happen from time to time. Anything from, uh, oh gosh, the a Abarth kits, for example, with little Fiat 500s and 600s, they were ripped off even in period. So ripping off or making it look like something that it's not quite, it's been going on for a long time. Uh, but yeah, I just love this color. So this is a V8 bi-turbo 4 Plus, and it has the AMG brake calipers that are kind of a bronze color. And the back seat looks very luxurious. Um, I love the dark wood panel. It's very sculptural. The plenum is just flat, comes up to the dash. Lots of air ducts, so the HVAC must be very, very uh, effective. And that soft sort of satin nickel surface in there is really beautiful. So this is a big, huge four-person sports car. Um, you know, their competition might actually be the Panamera with this. Um, or perhaps the Aston Martin Rapide, or what else? Maybe the Maserati Quattroporte. But uh, this is pure German. 
very AMG, um, excellent representation of Mercedes-Benz latest uh, design studio, so it's pretty cool. Nice color, too. Well done. Thank very you. Well done. Thank you. <laughs>